I've done the cylinders once every 10 years. This will be the fourth time. And each time I've done them, I, I did them a little differently in terms of the color. Um, and the peach blow, which is a special type of glass, uh, was done for the first time. And um, the second time, I used a lot of bright colors for the cylinders. The third time, I went back to the peach blow, but we fired it in a different way so that the color was, was completely different than the original ones from 74. Now flip it over. Look at that. Ah, isn't that unbelievable color? This, this series is called Navajo Blanket Cylinders. I started in 1974. Back in the 70s when I started the series, uh, I was collecting Navajo blankets. And so I used the blankets as, as an inspiration for the designs on the cylinders and I also made the glass blankets wrap around the cylinder like a real blanket would. And every 10 years I go back to them and, and revisit the series in a different way. But I uh, use the same people on the team. Richie's been working with me for about 26 years and Flor and Joey for I think it was 34 years. In 1971, uh, myself and some friends started the Pilchuck Glass School. And every summer we went back to Pilchuck, which was uh, an experimental glass workshop. It was kind of a school, but more than, I would say more than anything, it was a place where we developed ideas and experimented back when we didn't really care about sales or, or anything like that. And so nothing held us back from doing um, a lot of experimentation. I'm glad that, that I was there because it was so much energy because we were all working together to try to execute our ideas and the ideas were the most important things and we just got to use glass and we made, because of the group of us, we made more interesting work. It wasn't about the craft of it, it was about the idea of it. I guess it was 1974 and I was up at Pilchuck and Jamie Carpenter was there, and Italo Skanga, and Kate Elliott. And we came up with this technique that we could make little, little bits of glass, lay them down on a steel table, and then pick it up with molten glass, and then blow those into a form. And it was a technique that we truly felt was original and, and new. And I decided to take this concept and see what I could do with it. And I started by making some fabrics to pick up and I made them into cylinders and then I started thinking of Navajo blankets and so I started a series called the Navajo blanket cylinders. A lot of them were just straight lines and beads. Kate really got it going with the torch and then when I went to Snowbird that summer with Seaver Leslie and there were a lot of RISD people that came out with me, Flora Mace was one of my students. And so I told her about the torch and about how to make the drawings, and she was real excited about it. And she started taking the torch, bending and manipulating the glass threads, and became, you know, really extraordinary with this technique. In fact, no one ever was as good with manipulating these drawings as Flora. Probably no one ever will be because she's just miraculous with this torch. I would do, you know, boxes of drawings and send them off to Dale. And then he would blow with people and take little parts. Because I would send like a box of horses, and then I would do a bunch of blankets. And so he would 
add and subtract those things from whatever, you know, it was, it was like a pencil box. He could take either the whole drawing or part of the drawing or some of them got broken in the mail and he would start combining them. And so we've made very complicated drawings about the blankets and also about barbed wire. I liked the juxtaposition between the blankets and the barbed wire. And she would actually make barbed wire out of, out of the threads. Um, and then after two years, I felt that I'd taken the series as far as I could. The Irish cylinders were blown in, in the fall of 1975, just before I went on a, on a lecture tour in England uh, with Seaver Leslie, who collaborated with me on the Irish cylinders, and Flora Mace did the drawings because they're, they're carefully uh, articulated drawings from Joyce's Ulysses and, and a couple of other Irish themes and so the three of us worked on this project. Last Barn is done in a team. You can't do it alone but most people don't. It's much easier to do in a team. The more complex the work, the bigger the team. The glass board that runs that team, we call him the gaffer. And the gaffer you know, sort of like the captain of a ship, you know, the whole thing runs according to how his ability is to manage the team. Not just his skill, manage his, you have to have the respect of the people working for you. You have to, just like anything, right, in order, but only you can imagine in watching Glassblind, the sort of timing and finesse that it takes. Very little is said if you watch a, you watch a Glassblind team and hardly anybody's talking about the work. People often ask me, well, how do you communicate these ideas that you have to the gaffers? But I have about 10 different gaffers, depending on what I'm making. And, and they specialize, uh, usually a gaffer will specialize in one or two of the series that I make, and I make about 20 different series. And then new things are being developed frequently. And so it's, you know, it makes more sense to have somebody working on something over and over. They get better at it. That's the whole idea of blowing glass is you do it over and over and over and you get good at it but uh, you have to do it a lot to get good at it so i communicate in different ways with these gaffers and, it, and some of its drawings uh, but it's everything you know it's it's voicemail it's it's faxes you know it's fedex but mostly it's probably looking at the glass itself so you start blowing glass you make some pieces you come in the next, you know, you start with an idea, of course, and then you, you come in and you look at the work and, um, I, uh, and you talk about it. Now later I did a series called the Soft Cylinders, which were really a lot like baskets, and they had shard drawings and the shard drawings were made by blowing a bubble, breaking it into shards, and then taking a piece of the glass, and then Flora would work with a torch and a thread and make a design on the shard. So the shard was really the blanket itself, and then the little designs and crosses and uh, different patterns that were put were taken directly from Navajo blankets and Pendleton blankets. And then you'd lay down the shard on, the ta on a hot plate because you needed to preheat the glass so that the shard wouldn't break. And sometimes the shard would break. It still would often look good with the broken shard. And then the threads would go around it to form the warp and the weft, and then often other patterns as well. hard to blow because the shard is 
colors now, it's all on one side, and the heat is attracted to some colors more than others. So you'd often lose a soft cylinder in the process Open. of making it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What color is on there, man? There must be a green, softly, really soft. Got it? No touchdown? Yeah. The idea was to go ahead and blow them out and to make them not unlike the way we make a, a basket, uh, which is to use the heat and the fire and the gravity, uh, let the glass take its own course. Honey, get on the honey. I like to go as far as I can with the series to feel like I've finished it more or less and then go on to something else. What happens is after I've worked on a series and, and leave it, then I'll come back to it five or ten years later and work on it some more. In the case of the cylinders, uh, I went back and worked on it two or three different times. You know, originally I went to Jerusalem in 1962 and worked in a kibbutz. And when I went back uh, after 35 years, it made me want to do a series sort of using stone as a symbol for the Jerusalem project. You guys are drifting on your blowpipe. I don't know, it's pretty good. Sit down, sit down over there, see what it looks like. Pretty close, isn't it? I don't mind the idea of one being inside now and then, though. Chunk inside is nice. Yeah. Right there, right on the left. Okay, half, half in, the half in, half out. Let's go to now. Come on, dude. Grab it, Ed. Oh. Wow. You know, we've got a great glass blowing team. It was headed up by Jim Mongrain that make these. And they turned out so much better than I thought they would. I was so thrilled with how they came out. Blow a little bit. Stop. more like right there. Okay? Here we go, yeah. Flip. One more, Drew. Yeah, sideways. So it's sticking off of the vessel like that. Right here. Down, 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 down. Other way. There you go, right there. Lean it towards the vessel. Flip. Push it on, Michael. Alright, that's it. Let's get the torches. So here, you know, there's something new that comes from this project. We'd have never done those cylinders um, if we hadn't come over here to Israel, Jerusalem, to do this project. And, Well, this series is all black. Uh, I've never done that before. So the, a, lot of the, a lot of the threads for the weaving on the blanket are white. So they really pop out from the black surface. You know, I really, we're only gonna do three days of them. So I won't know kind of what I wanna do with them until I really look at them and decide. You know, you hope to be uh, making the right decisions as you're doing it. And that's one of the really tricky parts for an artist. Is, is making up their mind while they're working whether they're on the right track or not. And I don't know, they look good to me, so we'll see.